yes thank you okay well thank you first of all margaret to you for for extending the invite to join you um and to everyone thank you for having me um i am my name is hadi nijai and i am from speak up diversity so i founded speak up diversity but it's not just me it's me and the entire team we've got a seven of us that are working to, 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 to dismantle and tackle the systemic and structural racism in the city first, and then move beyond the city. So this is who we are, Speak of Diversity. And we've, we've named it so that it becomes very positive. You know, there are so many organizations, they have the racism in there. I think that's very important to be bold. Well, this is more about diversity. How do we dismantle the structural issues so that we can have a much more diverse and inclusive um, society in York. So um, what I would like to do for the next 20 minutes is to, first of all, tell you a little bit of who we are and our vision and our mission. And, and then followed by the four strategic initiatives we have to tackle structural racism. We've got four initiatives, but there's a fifth and bigger one, which I would like to share with you. And finally, just to say, how can we work together? We fundamentally believe that, and I think this is for the whole issue of racism, it cannot be done by one person or by one institution. It has, it's a, it's a human right issue, human rights issue. So how do we all come together to, to find a way in a positive and respectful way to deal with these issues? So this, th these are the four initial agen agenda points I would like to share with you. Um, so I'm going to do a lot of talking, but feel free to interject or ask any questions. Um, so Speak of Diversity was set up last year, formally set up last year um, to tackle the systemic and structural okay. racism. But really it started with me five years ago when I moved from London to York. So, so just a little bit of background of who I am. I was born in the Gambia um, in West Africa. Um, they came to the UK with my family and I grew up in Huddersfield. I went to Huddersfield school. I went to Leeds University to do my studies and my master's in international corporate law. And then I went to London just to further my, I thought the, the opportunities were much better. Um, in London and given my personality I'm more outgoing and I thought London matches my personality so I moved to London and but I specialize in risk management so um, I've been specializing risk management for the past 13 years um, when I was in London my organization Jacobs Engineering needed someone with risk management to come set up the York function so that's why I, I came to York so five years ago moved to York and I was shocked by the overt racism I had to experience and the stories I was hearing from people. So I started a conversation with the York Central MP, Rachel Maskell, asking the difficult questions, hang on. I have experienced institutional racism, but this is way too much. What are we going, going to do about it? So this started, the conversation started with her, the council five years ago, 20, 2015. But really we thought that last year, was a very historic opportunity. The killing of George Floyd sadly led to the re-emergence of the Black Lives Matter. Then a lot of people, a lot of leaders and the council wanted us to do something about it. So this, this is why we are here. Speak of diversity, setting up, set up to tackle the institutional systemic, systemic racism. But how do we do those things? How do we make sure that we dismantle, we understand what they are, we dismantle them, and also make sure we have a much more fairer society and a safer sort of society for everyone. So these are the four key initiatives that we have. So the first one is education and awareness. We've started working with a number of preschools here in York. Um, so we're looking at what sort of storytelling books do they have? How diverse are they? Do they come from diverse storytelling? But something as simple as looking at the walls around the, the, the walls in the nurseries, because we know as children, um, before you can read and before you can write, what do you see? You see pictures first. So what are the pictures and images telling our young children? So starting at the very ground up and taking it all the way up to the schools and hopefully to the universities. 
We've also worked with a number of schools. We're looking at some something as simple as looking at their their um uh um the bookshelves. What sort of books do they have in there? So look, looking at the education side of things, making sure that it becomes diverse, if we decolonize the, 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 educa the educational curriculum, um, and how do we bring in other initiatives so that young people understand how the UK was set up, how the UK was developed by different people from different walks of lives. Awareness is very important. We know that racism is a very difficult subject. It's very uncomfortable. So we are working with a number of um, theatres here in York. And also, luckily, the chief executive of the York Museum Trust has agreed to, to lend the, their spaces to us so we can do a number of initiatives so that we can have a very safe environment to have a dialogue and talking about these issues. So we're doing that. So they're very interlinked education and awareness. The second initiative to how we dismantle racism is setting up a BAME network. So we know for generations, there have been a number of policies which have been constructed, but we lack people of color who have a voice in there. So how do we demand a voice to be a voice at the table? So when these policies and, and decisions are being made, you have people of color saying, actually, this policy may not work for us. This policy may disproportionately affect people of color or our society. So it's really important to have a network from people from BAME backgrounds. The third initiative is policy solutions. Now, policy solutions, we are looking at policing, we're looking at education, we're looking at housing, we're looking at healthcare. We started working with the, the North Yorkshire Hate Crime Unit, the head of hate crime, um, and also the chief constab constable. We're looking at how can we we know that there's lack of reporting or underreporting. So how do we make sure that people of color do have the trust so that they can report hate crime or racial incidents? We're also looking at policing. Um, the number of stop and search on black and brown people is higher than um, white people. So what are the reasons behind that? And how do we make sure that that doesn't happen in York? Um, we're also looking at education. I mentioned education not long ago. We're looking at healthcare. Uh, we're looking at um, um, housing as well. The last initiative is a long-term initiative. So racial incidents in our schools and in our workplaces. We've met a number of young people who are mixed race, um, black, you know, from black and brown, um, black and white um, backgrounds, and also black, black people, Asian people, where in their schools, or even the workplaces, they do experience some racial microaggressions or some racism actually, but do they, they don't have a safe place where they can report these things to be trusted and then to have a fair investigation so that people are held accountable. That's lacking in our places where we go for school, for education or for work. So how do we make sure that we do this so people feel safe when they go to, to any environment and know that this is not tolerated so these are the four key initiatives that we are working on. The last one is a very long-term goal. We are not there yet, but certainly step number one and initiative number two and three, we've started doing them and things are progressing slowly, but we, we are getting there. But we cannot do this without co uh, 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 collaboration. So, so, you know, we need to work together. So we, we are working with the universities, the two universities here in York. We're also working with, uh, we've extended the invitation to YREN. We know that, um, I'm sure some of you know YREN. I think it's the York um, Equality, and I can't remember, YREN, York Race, Race and Equality, Equality Network. That's it, yes, thank you. Um, so, there are, so there are a number of, number of initiatives and organizations that are working in, in the field to dismantle racism, but we think that we need to be strategic. So we'll look at the structures and the systematic issues and find a way to solve them. Um, we also have the support of my MP, Julian Sturdy, um, and also Rachel Muskell and other councillors from Lib, Lib Dems, um, Greens and the Labour Party. Um, so it's really essential for us to have that collaboration and hopefully 
with, with yourselves as well and finding a way how we work together in different areas. So these are the four initiatives, but we have a bigger ambition for York, which is to declare York to be an anti-racist city. It has been done. We are not the first. If we, if, if, if we are successful, we would not be the first. So Oxford, I think they are the first city to do it. So they've declared the city as an anti-racist city. This is inspired, um, it, it, we got the inspiration from America um, and I think some cities in Canada, they've started doing it. Um, and essentially is this, we think that we first a need to declare and be brave in saying we do not accept racism in York, declare it, and then set up a multirational and, intersec multirational and intersectional panel to implement the actions and the initiatives to dismantle racism. We must have that panel. It has to be people. So to, to give you a quick example, the panel will consist of um, someone representing the LGBTQ+, someone representing the Jewish community, someone representing the Muslim community, someone representing from the Afro-Caribbean. So different people coming from different areas and come together and say, these are the 10 point actions or 20 point actions to dismantle racism. Let's do it. Let's now find a way in doing it. But how do we get the actions? It has to be a grassroots level. So we, we think that we have to work with a um, number of um, communities. So we just don't want to say speak of diversity and the York Labour Party um, members um, will be doing this. It has to be from the ground up. So the first thing we are doing is working with number, we've identified number of communities where we must engage with them. So for example, we will be working with, engaging with the Muslim community. We are speaking with the Imam. Um, he is fully on board with this. So he will be helping us to create an, an engagement session with their community to say, what does racism look like to you? What do you think the actions are so that it, it becomes part of the charter that hopefully the York Labour Party will take to the council to be debated and declare York to be an anti-racist city. So we're working with the, the, also the Jewish community. We've got someone from, from, from there. We've got the leader of the interfaith community, the travelers community. Um, the Afro-Caribbean community. So we, we've started doing the engagement. So what we need to do now is sit down with them and identify what these actions are. So for, that's from the community engagement level. We also need support and buy-in from the agencies. Agencies such as the um, York City of Sanctuary, we spoke to them, they are fully on board. The Refugee Action you for York, they're also in bo on board. Um, we need to, and also the universities, the two universities are rightly supporting us. And we need to get the support hopefully from you yourselves as a group and the York City Football Club and so on and so forth. So how do we work with the agencies to say, yes, we believe there's racism in this city. Yes, we will be on board. So when we complete the charter, Gary declared, we will see what the actions are for all of us to work together in dismantling racism in the city. The last thing I want to say on this anti-racist city declaration is the cross-party political support. In order to, to declare the, the, the city to be an anti-racist city, a political party must believe in what we are doing and take the charter or the resolution to the council and say, we want this. So luckily for us, um, the, the central MP Rachel Maskell and her Labour Party councillors have agreed um, to do that. We also got the support from some, from some of the Greens councillors and um, the Lib Dems. So it, we must have a cross-party political support. This is not a one-party thing and we do not want this to be a political, um, a political scoring point. This, we, just, we need them to be part of this. Um, and we've got that as well. So the intention is to take the charter in October um, this year. Um, so we've, we will be starting the community engagements in April until July, three months. 
And from July, we'll engage with the wider public. We'll do some media, um, get people, just normal people in the city of York know about this. If they want to sign the petition, great. So we can take them all together and say, this is the city demanding this. Um, so this is the bigger ambition. And this is, um, I think this is fundamentally important. If we really want to do something about racism, I think that we can be the first in the North of England. We can set the example and we can inspire other towns and cities in the North to do something about this. York is already a city of sanctuary. York um, has been part of the, the, the abolition of slavery. Will, um, um, will, will, is it will, William Wilberforce? Force. Um, and I think we have a real opportunity to, um, to, to, to be the inspiration really and, and, and be an ally to people of color who every single day experience covert and overt racism in York and in the UK. So I hope I'm having, um, I hope I'm within my time, but I think one question before I take any questions, questions from you is, I mean, my question is how can we work together? Um, I fundamentally, I, you know, I don't see us doing this work without your support. Um, and, you know, if there are any um, questions you have, I'm more than happy to take that on board. I'm also equally happy to provide any further information that you may need that I haven't really touched on here. But what I wanted to do was come in and say, this is Speak of Diverse, this is what we're trying to do. But we have a bigger agenda, which would involve all of us together, working together to, to get there. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, can you stop sharing your screen? Of course, yes. So we can see everybody again. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. That was really very, very interesting. I I've got a question. Uh, have you got funding from anywhere to do this work? <laughs> no, no, we, we <laughs> haven't. Oh. Um, we haven't. So we've, we've applied for funding um, last year, late last year, um, with the two ridings, but we were unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. um, it was to help us with the BAME network, setting it up. Um, and we've got a meeting, with, I've got a meeting with them in two weeks time to understand why, because we ticked every cr criteria, mm -hmm. but we did not have the funding. And this has been an issue with, you know, organizations, social enterprises working in this area where we, we just do not have the funding. Yeah. So I'm happy with this, but everything's coming out of our savings, our savings account. Oh. This is what we've committed to do, and we will do it 10 times over. So no, but I'm sure we will get something in the future. We all struggle with funding. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's, a, it's a problem. Can, sorry, can I ask another a question you talked about working with nurseries yeah children that young what about young people yeah so the young people we will be working with young people so i talked about awareness so the awareness bit that's where we'll get not just on, in the schools and in the nurseries but we'll get any other young person who would like to get involved so i mentioned the york museum trust and the theaters we are looking to work we we actually um, we, we spoke to the, also the chief executive of the York Royal Theatre, Tom, yes. Tom Bird. Yes. Um, we are having discussions of having a number of, we've got some really good ideas so that we can engage the wider public, but also young, how can young people yeah. can be part of the awareness ideas that we are working on. Yes. Um, but certainly we'll go into the schools, preschools, but we'll be doing something in the theatres, at the museums, the galleries, where young people can be part of it as well. Yes, my background is education. So obviously, I really think that that's the way to get through to society yes. is to get to the young people. Um, also, I work for the Scout Association. There's a whole, it's a huge organisation uh, in York. And um, we work with the, the mosque. We have a, a scout group at the mosque. Um, that might be um, a way in. You could go to uh, Scout 
group meetings and talk yeah. to them about what you're doing that might be a way in as well yeah no that would be that would be i think that would be a very effective approach to do yeah is that with the imam or who do i link with you or... i i can send you uh, okay. i'll send it i'll put it on an email and we'll get it to you somehow okay um it'll be the county commissioner for the, for north yorkshire okay. first of all thank you okay you you mentioned at some point that a petition um can you send that link through so that we can share it on social media and that sort of thing is that yeah so the petition will start in july right um so i but i can send you the draft version or if you like once we finalize it i can send that to you so you can yeah it. it's just that seems like a, quite a, a, a thing that we can definitely do yeah. for you is share that with our networks i mean i'm i've i've sort of tweet us fair trade yorkshire and i've got about 1800 followers on there so oh, um okay. yeah with it's uh, it, that's one of the other things actually obviously what this is focusing on york and obviously the the initial campaign is about making york a non, an anti-racist city yeah um but obviously in terms of speak up for diversity um is is that something that you you can imagine going wider to to yorkshire rather than just york yeah yeah i think i think what we wanted to do was to be smart um we are all volunteers so let's start small let's do let's do something here in york and we will be successful create a much equal playing field safer you know fairer and then we move beyond but just not not to bluff by any means but um, we've got an organization in london that they're looking to work with us now this is the bit where it gets tricky because you get opportunities from outside the the north and you and york you think well do i take it or is it too much for us yeah. um but we, we're getting some recognition in the south as well um but i really want york i really want to focus in york first yeah, yeah. and then expand yeah i completely get that that would be great yeah, and all I'm thinking actually is that I have um, connections with uh, with Hull and the Hull Museums Trust and the World Before Institute there. Uh, but I've also in my garage I've got quite a lot of materials yeah. that were part of the fig tree exhibition, the anti-slavery exhibition. Um, and if you're looking at putting on exhibitions, yeah. they effectively they belong to Fair Trade Yorkshire now. So if you wanted that we can we can sort of negotiate and look at look at what sort of materials would be useful for you to do um to use for any exhibitions that you have thank you thank are there specific criteria for um, an anti-racist city which are shared with other cities or does each city adapt its own criteria no we we can share it with other cities um the reason why we are not we're not adopting the oxford one we've really studied the oxford one and they've made a number of errors they did not really take into account the importance of engaging with different communities so mm. there were some black communities in oxford actually saying we don't believe in this because you never engaged with us so there's there mm. are some gaps in there so we've used that as a lesson learned so how do we create a much more inclusive um declaration so I think if we can do this properly, other cities can easily take it up and adopt it, but make sure that it fits within their city and what they um, wish to, to tackle. Mm. I think what's really important as well, having the two universities, I think the University of York have started also doing an anti-racism agenda. So we are coming together and doing it and hopefully take it um, beyond York. So to answer your question, hopefully other cities and towns can adopt what we can do here in York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Hadith, when you started, when you said when you first moved to York, you experienced quite a lot of overt racism. Do you think that York is improving at all as time passes? Um, or are you seeing things improving at a very, very slow rate so that it's hardly noticeable? I don't think things are improving. Um, I think what's, what's positive is a number of people actually willing to help and actually recognizing that this is an issue. So from that perspective, that's very positive. People are actually saying, you know, wow, you know, 
let's do something about this. But the issue of racism in itself, I don't think it's 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 getting better. Um, and the reason I say that is when I, a lot of times when I speak to people, they think, oh, York has no issue. York, it's, you know, York, it's York. It's, it's seen as an Anglo-Saxon city, so there are no issues. You know, there, you know, just yesterday, someone called me and told me what they had to experience. And I'm trying to encourage him to take it to the police. And he doesn't want to because he feels embarrassed. I live in Fulford and I like cycling and working. And I tell you every single day when I go out, people will see me and they will either have to see me and they will have to hold their purses and their bags so much tighter or they just turn around and ask me, are you from here? So it's not helping. I, I don't think it's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, but the positive is people, people are recognizing that this is an issue and they want to do something about it. Mm. I'm, very, I'm very sorry that this has happened to you. It makes me ashamed of everybody in York at the moment. It's awful because we have um, quite a mixed community with the universities, especially. You'd have thought people, you know, would would have got their heads around this by now in York. Mm. Oh, I'm really sorry. Worked at, at the university and heard what people say about, I mean, there's a lot of Chinese students there yeah. and just hearing what people say, uh, not people necessarily working in the university, but just the general attitude to those Chinese students. It, I can, I didn't realise about the sort of thing you've just described, but as a block of students as they're seen by people. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the gentleman is Chinese actually. Um, he, um, he was, because of the coronavirus. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. 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 Oh, mm. Tell him he should, he should go to the police about that one. It's, yeah, it's yeah. awful. Oh. It's really awful. Yeah. 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 Yes. Peggy, I, um, my name's Chris. Um, I'm sorry I um, couldn't join any sooner than I did, so I came in part way through, but I'm really pleased that I was able to, to join you. I've already sent you my email address there, and you probably wondered why, but I'm, I'm going to be the Lord Mayor of York from the 27th of May, so that's not far off. And anything I can do during the next civic year, uh, I, I'd love to do to help. I, I as many others will, will be aware, I've uh, been quite involved in our universities, particularly um, as chaplain to York St. John University for yeah. a, a number of years. And I, I was horrified sometimes with the experience of, of some international students. Mm. Um, up until that point, I thought York was, uh, mm. was a great place and welcomed everybody, but I, my eyes were opened by that. And I certainly remember some, I remember some African students, for example, who so I feel fairly safe when I'm on campus, yeah. but I really don't like to go into town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I think of two, um, two um, students from the Far East who are at the uh, University of York, um, who I offered a lift, uh, lift home from an event that was in the city centre mm. one evening, and they said, we really appreciate that. It's not that we mind walking, it's just all the abuse we have to suffer as we do. Yeah. Especially at night time. Yeah. Yeah. This was this was in the, in the evening and evening. Yeah. That was wasn't why I'd offered a lift, <laughs> but they they accepted on the basis of yeah we won't we won't get abused on the way home. It, it yeah. really shocked me. Yeah. Well, thank thank you, Chris. I'll I'll certainly be in touch. Um, um, I've I've heard of you. Um. Yes, some great things about you. So hopefully yeah, you can help us. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, anything I can do to help. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing this, Hadi. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm recording this. Um, and that, that was incredibly powerful. 
Um, I was wondering whether you would be okay with me putting this on the Fair Trade Yorkshire YouTube channel, because I think this is a story that people need to hear. If you're not, that's completely fine. But I would really like to for people to see the presentation and your what you've what you've mentioned afterwards. I think it's so important mm -hmm. because we're all shocked um, okay. from what you said because white people do not see this. Mm. Um, we we sometimes hear people being racist around us but we cannot know what it's like to be a victim of that yeah. sort of hate speech and I think it's so important that we help spread the knowledge as much as we can so if you're happy with that then I would, I would like to do that. Yeah I'm happy um, I think it's this is bigger than us isn't it if yeah. if one voice can help other people to understand and have yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, I, I, I teach a group on a Friday morning, a, a diverse group of, of ladies. Uh, it's conversational English, but actually we, we just talk together because we're, we're good friends now. Would you be all right if I mentioned um, your organisation to them on Friday? Because a lot of them are living in York and uh, might be having similar problems to yourself. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and, happy to, yeah. Okay, I'll um, I'll pass on your details if that's all right. Your name and, and everything. Thank you. Of course, yes, that's fine. Have we got one any of, more questions? I was just going to say one of the things that you've said is the importance of collaboration with groups such as ours. Mm -hmm. Is there which which would be more? helpful you to give us some ideas of the kind of collaboration you think we would be most useful in giving mm -hmm. or we talk about it and come up with some ideas to give to you and you and us we debate yeah. about it well can we do both yeah I was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah if we can do both that would be really good because then you can because what I don't want to do and say, here you are, these are the things we want. And, you know, and of course it will be debunked. I would like it to be challenged, but what maybe I might be missing some things, but that you, you would have the opportunity to think about and bring it to us as well. So if we can do both, that would be fantastic. Okay. We will. <laughs> okay. Well, can I just say, um, thank you. Um, I think, um, it's really important um, for us to talk together. And thank you for giving me this slot to talk about what we are trying to do. Um, I think that you are right. Um, storytelling or listening to people's experiences is very important because then you can connect from a human to human, can't you? But I, 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 I think it's, it's very important, but I think that it's now time to also look at what we do. It's now, now is the time for the doing instead of just the talking. I think the talking is important. It needs to continue, but the doing has to start. Um, and I am forever grateful that you are all willing to help and support. So thank you. Thank you very thank much you. indeed. It's, it's, yeah, been, uh, it's been absolutely fascinating mm. hearing you and uh, Will you keep us keep in touch with us and let us know how things are going? And yeah, of course. Is there anything we can do? Let us know. Yes, I'll certainly do that. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm Thank happy you. to come back if we've made some progress. If you want to know oh, how yes. things are going in the next couple of months or so, I'm more than yeah. happy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, please. When, Thank you. When you launch the petition, that yes. that's really yeah. good. And then yeah. we can uh, we can really sort of use that as a as a way yeah. to to, to um, promote the the campaign. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All Thank right. you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.